Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing another Strengths Materials problem. And this one's going to be super easy today. We're going to be looking into deriving stress on an inclined plane, which is very similar to what we've already covered. Uh, we've already covered normal and shear in previous videos, if you want to check that out at the top. Uh, but we're going to use this example here to cover what the topic is. So we have the steel bar shown below, which is used to carry an axle tensile load of 400 kN. If the bar is 45 millimeters thick, we're asked to determine the normal and shearing stress for plane AA which is this section taken from the metal rod at a 35 degree angle with respect to the y-axis. So what does it mean when we say stress on an inclined plane? Well, this pretty much means that the plane that we're uh, used to referring to, which would be along an x-axis or a y-axis, is going to be inclined by an angle uh, with respect to the axis of loading. So in this case, it would be uh, the x-axis in this figure over here. So this in turn uh, generates the need to break down the load forces pretty much into components that are parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Uh, and this will give us the respective shear, which is this force represented in V uh, along the transverse axis T and the respective normal force N along the normal axis represented by lowercase n. So the shear on normal stress can be derived using uh, the following equations here. In a general case where we have the x-axis and the y-axis parallel to that uh, normal force and then the x-axis parallel to that shear force, we have these formulas already derived. But now we need to consider how theta is going to affect this problem. So I've tried to label this diagram so that it's easy to follow how these equations are derived. We have uh, this red line to represent the theta we're looking at here. So in this case it would be the 37. But just for deriving sake, we need to consider a new area that the stress is going to be distributed over. So the area of our inclined plane is going to be a different size than the area uh, parallel to that y-axis here. And how do you get that? Well, we consider the angle theta, and using cos, we have the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and we can derive that the area of the plane is going to be equal to a over cos theta. Now looking down here, if we imagine that this uh, P force is reacting on the opposite end where this section is taken. We have that angle theta and can use that in turn using cos again to determine that n value, which is the force perpendicular to that angled plane. So n is going to be P cos theta. And then similarly, we have the shear force, which is parallel to that inclined plane. However, now the reaction is not actually going to be uh, in the same direction as the shear force that we're deriving for. But we use this theta, and with sine, we take opposite and hypotenuse, and we actually get V, which is equal to negative P sine theta, which taking these formulas at the top can be brought down to derive uh, normal force, which is P cos theta over A divided by cos theta. And this is with respect to the normal axis, N, lowercase. And then we have the shear force, which is with respect to the t-axis, which is once again parallel to that inclined plane. We have negative p sine theta over a divided by cos theta. And now if you want, you can look into the trigonomic identities that are used to simplify these formulas. Um, but just to save some time, these are the final formulas that we're going to be looking at for the normal force and the shear force with respect to plane AA. So now let's hop into this problem and see how simple this really is when we really get into it. All right, so looking at the problem, we're pretty much given everything we need to know. Uh, we have P, which is equal to 400 kilonewtons. But I'm going to take this right away and make it 400 times 10 to the 3 newtons so that we can get that newton per millimeter squared unit for megapascals in the future. We also have the A, which is the cross-sectional area, which is 75 millimeters times the thickness, which is 45 millimeters, giving us a area of 3,375 millimeters squared. Now we can pretty much plug and chug it into these formulas. So we have the stress or the normal stress with respect to that n lowercase axis. We have 400 times 10 to the 3 for that p value here over 2a, 2 times 3, 3, 7, 5, and we have 1 plus cos, cos, open that bracket, 
two times the theta value that we have, which is 37 degrees. Solving that, we're going to be left with 75.6 MPA. This positive value is meaning we have a tensile stress. Now we're looking at the shear force or the shear stress with respect to that T axis. We have the same procedure, which is negative 400 this time, times 10 to the 3, times the 2A. This is really just plugging and chugging. Uh, and then finally multiply by sine in the bracket, 2 times 37 degrees. And that will give you a final answer for the shear stress equal to negative 57 MPA. And that's that's everything, guys. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, it's just deriving the formula that kind of trips people up sometimes. So hope this video helped. Thanks.